Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing something which was requested by a few of you out there and I decided, do you know what, let's make it a thing. So I asked for some of you to send in uh, pictures of yourself so that I could do some facial analysis for you and I've got those pictures right here with me today. The more astute of you will know that yes, I have had my eyebrows touched up. I know they are dark. They will go. When you do tattooing um, of the brow, not of the body, um, you retouch it after like two, three weeks. So hence the eyebrows. I'm really grateful to everybody who sent their pictures in. And I was really surprised at how many people bothered to send them in. And when I was flicking through them, I was thinking, oh my God, are you guys good looking or what? Like, look at this guy. He's got an amazing skin. Look at this guy, perfect eyes. This lady, like, tight jawline. I was quite jealous when I was looking through them all. So, without further ado, let's go over to our first volunteer. Look at this guy's skin. You, sir, have amazing skin not a line, a wrinkle, a fold on it, no pigmentation, nothing. Absolutely stunning. And look at that hair as well. What a head of hair. I'm very jealous. Honestly, I mean, like, how can you improve on this? Seriously, he looks great. Um, I mean, if I was, I guess, being my usual super critical self, um, eyebrows look great. If for me and Picky, you got a little volume loss right here, but who doesn't? I do. Eyes are good shape, the lateral part of the eye is tilting upwards, which looks really nice. Okay, you he's really young, so of course we do have a bit of a tear trough there. I suspect with age, of course that's going to get worse, but right now, don't need anything there. Look at those eyelashes, honestly girl, amazing. There is a little bit of asymmetry between the right and the left. Definitely feel like, well the cheek on this side is a bit higher um, than on the other side. Let me get rid of some of those lines for you, no. I'd be very interested to see the nose from the side. Um, can't really get a sense of that. Um, whether or not there's any change that could be made there. If he came in and said that he wanted to look, I don't know, say a bit more masculine because he does look very cute, right? Um, I would probably increase the definition here and at the angle of the jaw because I, I do get a, a sense of kind of a, a, a length to the face. What's great is the width of the chin. It's great for a man. It looks like about the five of the distance in between the eyes. Doesn't he have great lips? Look at those lips. So, because of his heritage, you can really take that 50-50 lip look, which is very nice. Okay, so let me just summarize. Um, first thing, I'd probably do maybe a little bit in the cheek area because when we do that it's gonna help to lift up his under eye which as he gets older will become a bit of a problem I'm gonna do the angle of the jaw and straighten this part of the jaw can you see there's sort of like a bit of a, this sort of shape like a swan neck almost there try and correct the asymmetry present I guess it's really hard to see but on this picture I'm not sure whether or not the lip is slightly slanted it could be I think he looks gorgeous. What else can you do, really? I mean, right now, he really doesn't need too much. So thank you for submitting that. I guess it's all about prevention for this man as well. Um, you know, making sure that your skincare is on point, you're taking your supplements, you're eating right, all that stuff. Man, I hope you get to keep that hair as you get older because that is one healthy head of hair right there. Okay, let's go into someone new slightly older lady. Again, we've just got the pictures from the front here. 
Um, and I'm just going to be talking about non-surgical stuff, not surgical. Um, whenever I get a patient who's um, a little bit more mature and say they have a bit of heaviness in the lower part of the face, I, I always say, you know, the gold standard treatment for you could be surgical. But if for whatever reason that person doesn't want to have surgery or they can't have surgery, then that's where I come in. I think we can get a really good improvement on somebody with her face shape, um, non-surgically actually. Um, but it's not going to be easy, obviously. Where would you start? Um, I think the first place to start would be to do some skin tightening procedures. So, you know, as we get older, the soft tissue envelope, so the, the skin and the fat, um, that all changes and you end up with jowls down here because you've lost the volume of the fat, your skull has shrunk and also the, the skin has kind of dropped down the face. Um, so we need to do something to tighten the wrapping over the underlying structures, which would be something like either radio frequency, ultrasound, laser, or a combination of all three. If she were to go down the route of doing a fractional CO2, of course that would give really good tightening, but the downtime for that is pretty significant. So maybe seven to 10 days. Um, there's a risk of hypopigmentation as well. Um, and amongst a few other things. And a lot of people just don't want that. They want to have something which is not as aggressive as a fractionated CO2, um, or maybe they'll just kind of spot treat certain areas with fractionated laser. Um, and I guess that's where I come in. So I'd probably do some radio frequency and ultrasound for lifting. Um, she could do bit controversial sometimes, but you, she could do some threads. Um, I find that in patients who have got good skin volume still, she's got great skin volume still, um, they tend to work quite well. They don't work if your skin is kind of empty and there's no fat in there. You, you generally need to fill it first, but for her or for somebody with a face like mine, for example, they'd probably work quite well. So you probably put them sort of like this kind of shape then a few along the, the jaw like this for lifting and you'd, you'd use either the cogged or the barbed threads for that. Okay, so we've talked about contraction and suspension. Um, I'd then probably move on to volume replacement. So uh, we've lost some volume in this area underneath the eye. Um, no doubt we've lost some back here too. A little bit there. Lost some volume here. Lip. Uh, when you're doing bigger cases like this lady, it's very important not to add all the volume in this area here because you think that's where the uh, the folds are because it will just it will make it look worse. So you've got to replace the volume in the mid part of the face first and get as much lift and tissue contraction as you can before you then start to replace anything around the lower part of the face. Otherwise it, it looks really heavy, it doesn't look good. So yeah, I'd probably fill here, fill here, fill here. Uh, do some tiny little injections back here to get more lifting for her. That's after we've put the threads in. And then, yeah, I just see see how it looks. If everything was good and I felt like it was appropriate, then I would go on and do some here, you know, potentially in the marionette line as well, and even up those lips to um, these vertical lines. These are a sucker to treat, you know because if you put filler directly in the vertical line itself, it can end up kind of looking quite simian. So I think often it's better to go in from around here, pass a cannula underneath like so, um, and then it just supports the whole of the upper lip region. And of course, when you do that, it's not like you're literally just filling it. You get skin improvement as well, which is really key for her. So. In addition to that, I would do a series of either uh, 
needling or maybe laser or maybe add some peels in there too got to upgrade the skincare too to remove some of this pigmentation that we can see here um so you want to be using something obviously retinol vitamin c spf as a base um, alongside some other items uh for pigment removal so maybe um if you were going to use something uh, over the counter or just from a uh, a store uh, you could use a uh, skinceuticals advanced pigment corrector for example or Illumier intellibrite for example if you're going to go down the route of using something uh, uh prescription then i'd add in some hydroquinone for her hydroquinone is the gold standard for pigmentation removal you know what i can't really help with is this here this sort of puffy overhang on the upper eyelids um there are some devices out there uh like Tixel or plexo um which are energy based devices um supposedly they give tissue contraction so a lot of people do use them on the upper eyelids i've heard very very mixed reviews about them um some people absolutely swear by them other people they've done a course of treatment and they're not they're not overly impressed with the results say that they don't see anything so i really do think it's quite patient dependent you know maybe it doesn't work so well for some people and because of that reason and because of the downtime which i have seen afterwards i tend to steer away from them um i'm just not for me, the risk benefit ratio is is not quite there yet for those devices. If you're using them and you think they're great, if you've had them done yourself, let me know if you think they're any good or not because I am genuinely quite curious. Okay, let's move on. Another gorgeous lady, this time with an excellent camera, which is awesome. Okay, so she's probably what, what I'd say one of my more typical sort of patients um just starting to see the first signs of aging coming through and wanting to you know minimize those and really maximize the way that she looks which is cool so let's see i'd probably start by uh evening up the eyebrows slightly you see this one's a tiny bit lower so let's see if i can get that one to come up a bit using some botox i'd I'd fill the temple as well. You can't really see too well here, but I think that she's got some volume loss over on this side of the forehead, and that's probably why the brow is a bit lower. Um, let me get rid of that there. Moving down, um, when we do that, we'll probably get a, a slight eyebrow lift too, which will be quite nice, because it will take the tail of the eyebrow up maybe by about, I don't know, two to four millimetres, something like that. Um, at the minute, it's just a wee bit low. I'd get rid of this. It's like a cherry angioma there. I would put the highest point of her cheek right here. Um, if you guys have seen some of the videos before, you'll see that that's one of the um, beautification points. So it looks more attractive if that's the highest point of your cheek. You find it, well, there are loads of different ways to find it, but we we can draw a line across here to the tragus of her ear, the upper tragus. And then I tend to draw a line like, yay. Obviously we can't see her ear, so it's not the best uh, drawing that I have ever done, but at least it gives you an idea. And that's kind of how we find it like that. Um, obviously that would be with filler. So yeah, we'd fill that there. And I'd probably put some here. Can you just see that we've got the start of a bit of tear trough deficiency coming there in this kind of triangle here? I'd probably also try and get as much lift as I could because I feel like descent is going to come relatively quickly here. So that technique where we do lots of little tiny injections um, at the back in front of the ear seems to work quite well for these patients so I'd probably do that moving down yeah I'd, I'd even up the lip slightly I uh, by adding a little injection right here at the glaucocline point I do think she could take more size as well you could definitely go a bit bigger say 
couple of millimeters on the upper lip shape is good shape is very good i i just keep the same as she already has maybe just change the ratio slightly uh uh, I, to be slightly more in favour of the upper lip but I, I think overall you know looking good and then I'd probably finish off by doing the chin crease here and maybe just the point of the chin too I don't I can't really see very well here but I kind of get a sense that this fat pad there is a bit overwhelming I don't know can you guys see that and then we've got this space here so I think I'd fill here, yeah, and watch out for watch out for this bad boy right there. Um obviously we don't have the side profile, but I feel like I would like to do the angle of the jaw and probably the forehead as well. Um I I get the impression that there could be some flatness there. Um and yeah, after that, we'd, we'd probably do a bit of skin tidying up. Um, we've got some hyperpigmentation there. Um, could probably improve that. Uh, sort of evening out the texture. I do get a feeling that maybe there's some open capillaries around the nose too, so we'll laser those. That's about it really. It's just maintenance. You know, when you get to this kind of age, it's that weird peculiar tipping point where everything just starts to not work as well as it used to um some people reach that earlier than others i think i got there at like i don't know age 26 or something my telomeres are really short and maybe that's why i don't know i i uh i don't age well judging from my telomere length and i, I guess for for different people that's different so you know you get some people who look amazing still at 40 possibly they're telling me length i don't know um but visually if someone came in looking like this i'd be really pleased to see them because it's very easy to treat now it gets a lot harder the longer it's left another good looking young chap awesome um okay so We've lost some volume in the temple. I think you guys can probably see that. And that would be the thing which shouted out to me the most. We've got a downward tilt of the lateral part of the eye and we've got this scleral show here as well. So when when this part is filled and you do some filler around this area here, it's kind of the cheek, kind of the lid cheek junction. If Kind of fill both you'll see that the lateral part of the eye will begin to curve upwards again and i think that, that will look quite nice i feel like we've probably got a bit of volume loss here as well it might not be very evident on this picture but i feel like that's what's going on here great jawline very good jawline very strong um possibly we could straighten this out slightly so that he doesn't look quite as hollow. Good width to the chin point. I think if I was being super, super picky, and why not, I would straighten this, straighten this slightly, and maybe add some volume in this area here, where I'm just getting a feeling that things are starting to disappear. It's not a high priority by any means. Everything looks good. You know, because of the width of his jawline, call me crazy, but I actually think he could go bigger on the lip. Um, just a touch. I think that, that might look quite nice for him. This is a real problem for guys um what do you do well yeah it's difficult um minoxidil finasteride dutasteride all tricky it's unfortunate because you know when women start losing their hair or if they have thin hair they can have hair extensions put in which at least disguises a problem it's tricky as a man what do you do 
To be honest, if it was me, I would probably just have a few pieces put here. Um, I'd have a, a, a transplant. Why not, you know? You can do it relatively cheaply these days. You know I me, mean? I'm all about um, maximising what you've got, if you can. But yeah, all in all, I think looking pretty good. It's quite interesting because on men, sometimes, because you can see the ears, it's a really good demonstration of how the skull can be different uh, from one side to the other. So when I'm assessing somebody, if it looks like they've got a fairly significant asymmetry, I just have a look at their ears. If their ears are in a different position on both sides of the head, then yeah, they're, they're asymmetric. Skin looks good though, doesn't it? You've got this really lovely uh, blush <laughs> about him, which is, is very charming. Well guys, I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed that and yeah found it in some way useful um thank you so much to everybody who sent their pictures in it's really kind of you to do that um I hope if your photo has been featured here that it's in some way useful for you it maybe gives you a few ideas about what you could potentially do or I don't know or is at least some way interesting for you um yeah, I'm probably going to do another one of these at some point. So if anybody's interested, then just DM me a message on my Instagram and I will get around to it at some point, I am sure. Um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, join me again next week where I will be talking about stuff that you see on YouTube, uh, lip fillers specifically, um, and how other people do it. I guess that's a bit non-specific. But anyway, come back next week and you will see what I'm talking about. See you later. You're shining bright as crystal, moving like a twister.